Before we begin, we'd like to make something clear. We're not here today to sell you something. Not a lecture and not a life lesson. We're just kids. But there is something to be said for kids and their propensity for storytelling. J.K. Rowling has said that she will defend the importance of bedtime stories until her final gasp. With this in mind, we'd like to share a couple of stories with you tonight. Ones which might actually be bedtime stories, depending on how many of you are already falling asleep. <laughs> on this packed and parched football field, as the breeze blows red gowns around the ankles of 723 kids who made it, we invite you just to listen. Remember that girl in your freshman year English class? I know it was a long time ago, but just try. She always looked a little overwhelmed, almost nervous to be herself. Stranded in a crowd of people who already knew what their futures looked like, this girl had nowhere to go. Now think about that boy in your freshman year biology class, unable to take things lightly he seemed permanently serious about his schoolwork and defined himself by his grades. You noticed that this boy found comfort in working on his own. And as the year went on, you were never quite sure if he was shy or just awkward. If you think back to freshman year, we can all see ourselves within these two people. Overwhelmed, nervous, lost. Rigid, awkward, reserved. Feeling alone. Alone, despite being surrounded by 723 fellow freshmen. Classmates we didn't know and who didn't know us. Yet. By the time sophomore year rolled around, you could tell that this girl was sick of feeling out of place. And, soon enough, you noticed her name brightly plastered on campaign posters over the school walls. Later, as she excitedly led pep assemblies, you saw her chucking t-shirts into the crowd with unrestrained spirit. On the first day of junior year, you saw this boy in your chemistry class. As you learned about acid-base titrations, you saw his eyes light up. On your way out of school one day, you caught a glimpse of him laughing with the Science Olympiad team. You weren't quite sure, but you may have even heard him make a joke about how all the good chemistry puns are gone. <laughs> are gone. <laughs> On the night of senior prom, you shouldered your way to the edge of a cheering dance circle, curious to see the cause of such enthusiasm. Red dress, high heels, surrounded by people who were once strangers, she twirled with confidence rather than grace and didn't seem to mind. She was right where she belonged. Monday morning, 7.45, Fieldhouse. AP biology students filed in and sat down in plastic chairs that squeaked with the fidgets of 200 anxious nerds, all but one who sat with his back straight behind five freshly sharpened Ticonderoga number twos. He turned to his right, offering a pencil to a student who had broken his in a panic. To his left, the boy comforted a girl who had her head on the table, reminding her that it was only a test. Seems like two happy endings, right? But these stories haven't even ended. None of ours have. And they didn't become perfect. None of us will. We've all grown from the awkward, overwhelmed freshmen we once were to the self-confident, well-adapted seniors we are on our graduation day. Look around you and your classmates, your friends, your lab partners. Remember a moment you shared an inside joke, a mutual friend. It's the experiences we've shared here at Hinsdale Central that helped shape us. 
excitedly writing a letter to our senior selves freshman year, your intense fear of the school geese that you would never admit to anyone, Jonathan Chen, who held the door open for us every morning. Obsessively asking your friends if they were crazy enough to be taking AP Euro, looking around the field house during the SAT, and realizing how many people you still needed to meet. Trying to get the chain smokers to play at our senior tailgate, tagging them 140 times in Stephanie Dollahide's Instagram picture, wondering about a mysterious donation for a new DJ, until the administration threatened to cancel the tailgate entirely, at which point we tried to move it to Cheyenne's house, and finally settling for the school parking lot. But it's fine, I'm over it. Your genius math partner, who helped you without making you feel stupid. Your math partner, who didn't know what was going on, but made you feel like a genius. Mrs. Hall, who made you feel more special with every hi kiddo in the morning. Repenning your friend's toga behind the bleachers at a football game. Being the first class to have a victory bell to ring. Ending senior assassins in favor of senior tag. Leading a school-wide demonstration at 10 a.m. on a historic Wednesday morning. The senior wedding prank that almost happened. Reading the letter your freshman self wrote to you and laughing at how much you've grown. These experiences helped us grow, but we're still far from perfect. We are all distinctly aware of our imperfections, which tend to manifest as insecurities. It's true, there will always be a faster swimmer and a better guitar player. No matter how old or wise we think we are, we will always be works in progress. We can't eliminate our flaws completely, but we can embrace them to make them work for our passions. That girl from your English class thought she was lost, but that uncertainty allowed her to explore her possibilities fearlessly. That boy from biology believed he was overly serious, but that same rigidity gave him the drive that allowed him to succeed. I have two questions to ask you that I hope four years at Hinsdale Central have prepared you to answer. Who are you right now? And who do you want to become? There's a distance between these two people. The person you are now and the person you will become. But the trick is to make that distance motivate you rather than allow it to scare you. Look around this football field, class of 2018. For the last four years, we have grown thanks to these people who befriended us, cared for us, and challenged us. So for all your help preparing us to bridge the divide between who we are and who we will become, we'd like to show you our appreciation. Thank you to those who raised us. Thank you to those who taught us. Thank you to those who supported us unconditionally. And to the class of 2018, thank you and congratulations.